like to say good evening to everyone. Welcome to another lecture presented by the Syracuse class. This is a school and not a church. Neither are we affiliated with any religious organizations. This school is a nonprofit, non-denominational, religious and scientific research organization that is dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of the eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. The school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, state of Ohio in the year 1931. Uh, in this school, we use a true, correct, or no, I have to introduce the dean. This school, the Syracuse class, was established in 1969. This time I'd like to introduce the Dean, Dr. Patrick Trevison, and our uh, uh, Vice President, Dr. Um, Bob Welch. Now in this school, and throughout the lecture this <laughs> evening, we'll be using a true, correct, and original name and title for the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of your Heavenly Father is Yahweh. This has been erroneously substituted with the title Lord. For the word of Son, we use a divine title Elohim. This has been erroneously substituted with the title God. And the name of the Holy Spirit manifesting in or out of a physical body is Yahshua Messiah. This has been erroneously substituted with Jesus Christ. Now, Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. We now know each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means Elohim is the title that your Creator chose for Himself. Jesus is a name, but it's an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part into an encyclopedia or dictionary would prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language contain any character or letter in their alphabet that would produce the sound made by the letter J. Neither was there a J in the English language until some 1400 years after the death of the Messiah, therefore making such names as Jesus and Jehovah impossible renderings of the true name of the Father and His Son. Now Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Now Yahweh, our Heavenly Father, is pure spirit. And in His pure spirit state, He is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in His pure spirit state, symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because the cloud has no particular or descriptive shape and form. And if you take a look at this chart, you'll see that we have this fiery cloud painted all the way around the edges of the chart so that everything on the chart is within this fiery cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within this pure spirit state of Yahweh. And Yahweh, knowing that man cannot perceive of him in this pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Yahweh Elohim. This is the Word or Son, a super incorporeal being, that is, having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This visionary shape and form can only be seen by divine visions and understood by divine revelation. Later on, the self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body, walked the earth plane as Yahshua Messiah, whom the world has come to know erroneously as Jesus Christ. Now there is only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is what was the name of the Savior during the time that he did walk the earth plane? You can get a better and further understanding of his name and title by reading a preface to a Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. We call it a divine pattern because this is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt and into the wilderness of Sinai, He then called Moses on top of Mount Sinai and revealed uh, this tabernacle pattern to him in a vision. Moses was instructed to return to the wilderness of Sinai, build one exactly as he had seen in the mount. This tabernacle pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. And in this school, we show proof how that everything is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold, threefold tabernacle pattern, and absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. 
Now, in this school, we had 10 primary constitutional aims or objectives there as follows. First is to help you find and know Yahweh or Elohim as he really is and actually exists. Second is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua Messiah without distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religion, psychology, philosophy, modern, practical, and occult science. Fifth is to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn and know and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh is to discern and avoid and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth is to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith, which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained, there is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua Messiah. And tenth is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua Messiah with a hope of immortal glorification in the newer state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan is speak the truth. And I'd like to have this evening's class dedicated with a prayer by our Vice President, Dr. John Cometti. That'll be followed by a scripture reading, which is Isaiah 55. Our scripture readers this evening, Dr. Deb Cometti and Dr. Tracy Bennett. Merciful and graceful Father Yahweh, we give you thanks and all praises. Thanks again for the opportunity to come together and learn um, more of your divine purpose. And we ask that you give us a sincere heart that we may receive the truth and sincerity and follow through and give us the strength to endure in the end days here. All the blessings you have bestowed upon us, we give you thanks for, and we ask to continue in the same light. All these and others we ask in your son's name, Yahshua the Messiah, let us say, say hallelujah. hallelujah. class, I'll be reading Isaiah, the, 50, the 55th chapter. I'll be reading from the King James Bible, and I'll be inserting the true names where necessary. Ho, everyone that for thirsteth, come ye to the waters, and he that hath no money, come ye, buy and eat, yea, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfieth not? Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Incline your ear, and come unto me. Hear, and your soul shall live, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Behold, I have given him for a witness to the people, a leader and commander to the people. Behold, thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not, and nations that knew not thee shall run unto thee, because of Yahweh the Elohim, and for the Holy One of Israel, for he hath glorified thee. Seek ye Yahweh, while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto Yahweh, and he will have mercy upon him, um, and Arel, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith Yahweh. 
For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain comes down, and the snow from heaven, and returns not thither, but watereth the earth, and make it bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. For you shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up, come up the fir tree, and instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree, and it shall be to Yahweh for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. That was Isaiah, the 55th chapter. Thank you. Hallelujah. And thank you, Dr. Kamadi and Dr. Bennett. And for our first speaker, it's my pleasure to introduce from Canada, and now we're international tonight, Dr. Lionel Von Lancher. Well, good evening, everybody. How, are, how is everyone? Everyone in Zoom, uh, YouTube land, good too, I'm sure. And if, well, you know, people look at these things later, right? So you never know. Yeah. Algorithms are funny things. You know, you punch in something, and next thing you know, this pops up or that pops up. And, and that's the beauty of these classes in recording and broadcasting. The seed gets cast out, and who provides the increase? Yeah, we provide the increase. Right. But you got to cast. Yep. Don't worry about what comes back. But you got to cast. Anyway, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, I wasn't sure if I was going to be here when I woke up this morning and this afternoon and probably a couple hours ago and restless, want to do something. It's quiet in my world. And um, cross the border, roam around, and next you know, oh, next you know, go this way, that way. Oh, I'm in the throughway. Oh, there goes this. There goes. All right. We're here, so you didn't need to call me, but thanks for the opportunity. Anyway, I don't travel around to to speak or not speak. I'm not a rock star. I'm just some guy, just happened to be from Canada, and um, just grateful to have the opportunity to learn some of the Yahweh's purpose and plan. And that's a very humbling thing, because as much as um, well, as much as we like to do lots of things in this world, um, it's, it's Yahweh that moves us along, puts us where we need to be, you know. Mm -hmm. And this is a very beautiful chart. You may think, oh, it's just a names chart. And yours is very elaborate. And, you know, and not there's anything wrong with more of a basic one like we have in Hamilton, for example. But yours has got all kinds of great stuff on it. And the joys of coming to a class in person is that you can come up and take a look at the chart. See the scriptures on there, right? Let, let that guide you and pull you into looking at different things that Yahweh, through Yash the Messiah, is going to direct you to see the things that you may have already known but forgot, right? Which happens all the time. And that's why... You know, when we uh, deal with weather and precipitation outside, it's rainy, foggy, misty today. It may snow later, maybe not today, but or it may rain again and then dry. For That's all working a purpose over and over again, right? Well, let's start at the first verse here and, and, and go with a, a few things. Uh, a couple things are on my mind, and I'm not going to be on the floor too long, I don't think. But Isaiah, Isaiah 55 and 1. Ho, everyone that thirsteth. Come ye to the water. Yeah, you're thirsty. You think about it logically. You're thirsty, you come to the water. You're going to drink, right? right? Read next verse or next sentence. And he that has no money, come ye buy and eat. If you have no money, come buy and eat. Well, but you have no money. How could this be? 
what are you coming for the what is the water and the bread ultimately is where this is leading you to right. not the stuff you see at the grocery store or the convenience store that you know whatever okay but anyway read on yea come by wine and milk without money and without price what a great system right a lot of people would be fed and yeah. right from a physical standpoint you get food and bread uh, hey you even get wine without having to pay anything right. but wait these things are free you still have to go out and buy your bread and your wine those things like that from a physical standpoint but the bread yasha was the bread and the life right? right and he's free and sometimes people forsake things that are free that's Yahweh's purpose obviously but they forsake things that are free right this is written in our hearts and minds over here this wasn't free for those that th these carnal ones were given to this wasn't free you had to work at these things and had to do it exactly as it was set up or it back here before that before those were given up here off the Mount Sinai here the children of Israel then had to pass over they had to work in the sense of doing this Passover exactly as Yahweh prescribed otherwise they're not coming out you get a sicker lamb lame lamb you kill it have the blood in the door but wait that's not good enough it's over oh, there's blood in the door but wait the lamb that you sacrificed wasn't the right one without spot and blemish right these things are free read on wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread why do you spend money for something that's not bread right the real bread you may buy them and spend the money you get your wonder bread or your artisan bread or your baguettes or whatever you get at the store but that real bread why are you spending money for something that isn't bread the real bread is the gospel the truth and you look what's happening in the world today there's about what 100 people in gaza that were wiped out and forget about who's right or wrong for a moment and forget about the political side of it just the principle of people going in need there's food and aid and, and, and people are getting killed coming for food Right. forget about right and wrong just think about the concept we come to these classes for food and yet people die in these classes if the truth isn't preached right? right or people may go to their local local community building with a tower and a clock and a church or whatever else those kinds of establishment and you're going somewhere to be fed in theory but you're not really being fed crackers and grape juices and sustenance Oh. Trust me. <laughs> not, not that I'm Catholic, but I, I'm sure I couldn't survive very long like that. But anyway, but those things are uh, that are on my mind. And well, how they get food now? That you guys just in a bunch of other countries did some food drop. Food's coming from the heavens down to these people. They receive food back here, manna as well, right? I, I'm just just food for thought. Do with it what you wish. And I know from my heritage, my parents grew up during World War II, and they uh, during the hunger winter of 45, um, 44, 45. You know, they were eating tulips, tulip bulbs, right? Not the flower part of it, but the hard. You know, that's all there is. And then the food come planes go over and they drop food down. And I got a, a family video. My my opa had a. Uh, he could have been jailed and all kinds of bad things, but he had a Super 8 camera and took some some small excerpts of films from that period of time or whatever else. And there's the family. They're, they got the Red Cross, whatever, loaves of bread, and they're stroking that like it's the Lombardi Trophy or the Stanley Cup or a piece of gold. They're, they're petting the bread. But they hadn't had bread like that before in a, or in a long time. And the gratitude that people have for those things and the gratitude that we have when we have a chance to come in off the street and come to these classes is important. Whether you have a class locally, it's great that you can get assemble as you desire and so forth, you know. And for other folks that are in various countries that don't have a class that are by themselves, they're still getting fed. The folks in modern Australia, Clifford in Malaysia, Rita in Ghana, so, you know, and the folks in Kenya. Well, there's no one that, went, you know, that's speaks Swahili that's over there teaching them. Some people convert the stuff with Google Translate. But there's a hunger. There's a real hunger for the truth. And when you know, when you're at the top of this chart, you can't really see it, obviously, if you're watching YouTube, it says the veil is taken away revealing the truth. And when you know what the truth is, you can't go back. You'd be foolish to go back when you know the truth. When you come to understand that the name of your heavenly father is not Lord or God, because those are titles, but his name is Yahweh, when you know that and you've investigated that and you've looked in the dictionaries and encyclopedias and seen those things, 
How could you possibly turn back on that truth and put the veil back over it? Oh, I didn't like that. Let's cover it up again. Right? But the same thing has happened all along the line. When the, when the truth was revealed, and you see it over here in the chart, right? All these patriarchs and so forth, they struggled and they labored and they, they, they had to deal with all kinds of persecution and challenges through their lifetime. Sawn asunder and, and ridicule, you know, obviously in the four, if you had the triple series charts and all the examples of the book and so forth, they had to deal with a horrible circumstance and situations, but they kept their eye on Yahweh's purpose and plan as well. And ultimately, that's Yahshua the Messiah. So after the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, what happens? Listen, that adversary is coming in there with the persecution. He knows. He's, he, the adversary's heard the truth because he knows the truth, but he's trying to hide the truth because he's what? He's right over here. He's a murderer. John 8 and 44, please. John 8 and 44. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. Yeah, the lusts of your father, you're from the adversary, right? And he's calling, and you, obviously we pick one verse, but you've got to read the verses before in the whole chapter, etc. In context, but that's not, you know, but read on if there's anything he else. He was there. a murderer from the beginning right. and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. Yeah. So that's being written over here on this side of the cross after Pentecost, okay? On that chart to see it and over here after the cross again. These charts are all the same, really, if you look at it. They look to be different, different setup, but they're really showing you the same thing, how he's purpose and plan through the age of dispensation to give you a different visual perspective of what's going on. But in this side of the cross, he's writing over here, but he's saying, listen, you were a murderer. And, that last sentence there, Deb? Mm -hmm. He was a murderer from the beginning. From the beginning. And the truth. The murderer from the beginning, not yeah. the beginning of this age. He's consistently lying in a murder in this age, but from the beginning, way back over in the angelic, right? Okay. All down the line. And you, you know, and you go to this chart here, kingdom, it truly circles across the top, there's chaos or chaotic here, a dark chart. But then you come on over here, and you see what? False prophets. There are prophets back here before Yahshua Messiah is on the scene because they're testifying of him coming, but there are also false prophets there. And the way you discern a false prophet from a true prophet is that the true prophet, what they say is going to come true and have witnesses, etc. And the lying prophet's going to say something that doesn't come to pass, and they'll make up something else, and they'll make of something else, and they'll try and distract you with something shiny and cute. On this side, you've got false prophecies doing the same kind of thing, saying the Messiah did this, or there's no Messiah, or he's, he's hidden, oh, he's in a secret spot over here, or he's in the box at the front of the church. All these things are constant examples. That adversary is trying to hang on as long as he can. And what did, what did John say in his, in his prayer this morning, or this evening? You know, uh, give us the strength, right? Yahweh, give us the strength, right? I'm pretty sure that's what I heard, right? Give us the strength. Yahweh, give us the strength. We can think of ourselves that we can muster all kinds of our strength uh, and courage within ourselves and look at ourselves, and that's important to be introspective and self-examined, for sure. But it's Yahweh that's going to give you that strength to persevere, to accomplish His will. Just like that water that's going to come forth that's spoken of later on in this scripture, verse and lesson, and so forth, you know? People, there's a hunger in the world, right? You see with Gaza and the people, all those things, there's a hunger, all kinds of people starving in the world and, and uh, food issues everywhere and stuff like that, you know? It's, um, you have to be grateful the more so you get, you know? There's a, there's a remnant of good food that's out there, right? There's a remnant of those that are hanging on to the truth. Because that adversary is trying to let that curtain go back over the truth. Oh, it doesn't matter. And I was thinking about my ride here. When you got three hours of drive, you got a lot of time to think. Sometimes too much, but you know, but sometimes just enough, right? And I think, well, names don't matter. My passport, the name in my passport has to match my Nexus card. If it doesn't match, there's a problem. But it doesn't stop there. It's got to keep, it's got to match my Ontario driver's license. It's got to match something else. My uh, my health card. It's important with free health care. It better match. It's got to match my whatever my credit card. It all has to match. Or there's a problem. 
And what's the big thing going on in the world today, these days? Identity theft. Yes. Right? Yeah. Get, you pay extra money for protection, right? My daughter works at a, at a physiotherapy clinic, and some people broke in the other day. They weren't coming in to steal whatever. They're coming to take the laptops. You know, back in the Toronto area, they had a big conference of the inter Toronto government, provincial government, federal people, the police, whatever. People are going in and stealing those point of sale devices, those those uh, debit and tap credit machines, right? You tap, you pay, you got your coffee, you're gone. But wait, your information is in that device, so people are going breaking in only to take that. Forget the safe. There's no money in the safe. Don't people don't have cash anymore? But they're not stealing the, the knives and the and the and the kitchen materials or anything. Else. They're taking those machines and going back home on a computer and they're downloading people's information and do it processing refunds and transferring money out of that machine into some bank account or into gift cards and, and taking off with it. The thoughts and intentions of man are evil continually. Yes, they are. Right? They are. These they things are. are just, you think, you know, people are knifing you and back and stabbing you for your purse or wallet, you know, all those things. But Yahweh is not the author of confusion. And that's why it's important to do whatever we do, love each other and keep things simple and clear with witnesses. Just like a whole series of ID that I have, you guys have the same kind of thing. It all has to line up and match. Right. And my social insurance number or social security number, if I was American, would have to match. Otherwise, I'm not getting any benefits or whatever else when that retirement age comes. Anyway, all those things are important. Let's go down to Scripture. Let's go down to uh, 6. Verse 6. Verse 6. Seek ye Yahweh while he may be found. Seek Yahweh while he may be found. Right? Now, wait. You can't get outside of Yahweh. But you still should seek Yahweh while he may be found. Right. Why? Because there's a time when you aren't going to have that safety and stability. What am I talking about? Noah preached for 120 years, build the ark. He hadn't had his kids yet, right? Build the ark. He's got a couple kids. He built, you know, eight of them get on this ark, and they were sealed in the ark for seven days. When it's sealed, you can't get in there. The time to seek Yahweh was done when the doors closed. But they still had, they still carried on for the seven days waiting. And the people outside, we wonder, ha, ah, what a fool that Noah was. Where's this rain, buddy? Joker, whatever. You know, you know, people are awful. But they're sealed in that ark. There's no way in after it's sealed. Seek Yahweh, may we find. May we be sealed in this faith and the glory. May we be sealed in Yahshua the Messiah while there's time. And that's why every class is important. You know, yeah, you can't get to everyone physically. You can't get to every Zoom. You can't. Sometimes there's over. There's so many Zooms and stuff. Man, you can do 10 Zooms in a row, and all of a sudden you forgot what you heard in the third one and the fourth one, but there were good points. That's not the rip on that process. Sometimes you need to digest. You have a big meal, and if you have a big Thanksgiving dinner or whatever big meal, and then you want to have a big dessert, and then breakfast, cut, another, you pile these big meals on each other, your body's going to be backed up, and you're going to have indigestion and other problems. Okay, read on. Call ye upon him while he is near. Yep. Let the wicked forsake his well, way. While he's near, while the time, we're at the end of this age here, right? Revelation of Yahshua the Messiah. Listen, the revelation of Yahshua the Messiah, you want to be partaker of that revelation of Yahshua the Messiah before it's being revealed. Because when it's being revealed, it's too late. You should already be in it. And that's Ephesians 1, 9 and 10, etc. Reconcile all those things. Well, there's that opportunity, you know? People have older folks in their lives that pass, and, and before they pass, they want to know about Yahweh's purpose and plan, right? They want to know what is this thing that you've been doing all this year. They didn't care about it for the 50, 60 years that they raised you as a parent or whatever else, but before they go, they know there's something there. Then they want to know. Right. And you know, all you need is just a little bit. With the founder say, if you have a little bit of the Holy Spirit, what do you got? The Holy, Holy Spirit? Spirit. So those very transcripts, I, you know, don't take my quote on it anyway, but read it, read on. So let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto Yahweh, and he will have mercy upon him. Yep, let him return unto Yahweh, right? Don't return back to your priest, or your minister, or your pastor, your dean, or whatever, whatever type. No, return unto Yahweh. Look yourself in the mirror, right? Get some quiet place. 
Return of the Yahweh. Yes. And in second, we'll get to Second Timothy shortly too. I think maybe we'll see. But go on. And he will have mercy upon him and Elohim, for he will abundantly pardon. He will pardon. Yahweh Elohim will pardon you. Yep. Not your priest, not your minister, not your dean, not, not your best friend who's been in class forever. It's Yahweh Elohim that's doing those things. Let's go to Second Timothy and probably uh, the last couple. Second Timothy, the second chapter. Uh, starting, I don't know the verse number, but foolish unlearned questions. 16 or 17 maybe start at that one Timothy right 2 and 22 thank you flee also youthful lusts but follow mm -hmm. righteousness faith love peace with them that call on Yahweh mm -hmm. out of a pure there, heart there's some stuff you got to give up and it's not for Lent it's those foolish lusts and those things and stuff like that right Lent's a man-made concept not someone else can speak along but that's a whole different thing but flee those youthful lusts there's a time to be wild I guess as it were but there's a time to flee those things. It gets to be serious business. Yeah, you can have some fun still in this gospel. You can, yeah, always well, got a great sense of humor. Just look around the news and all these other things. He's got a great sense of humor. Right. Pay attention to what's going on. He, look what he does with us sometimes, you know? Read on. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid. Foolish and unlearned questions avoid. You know, those that are parents here, your kids in the back seat of the car, you're on a five hour journey somewhere, and they're asking, oh man, why is the sky blue? Why is this? And why, what, whatever, are we there yet? You know, which is not necessarily a foolish question, depending if they have to go to the bathroom or something like that. But, but those things that over and over, they ask you those kind of questions, and they drive you, they're just asking, ask questions. They don't really want to understand it, but that's not their fault. They're children, they don't know. But when you come to a point in time where you reach a certain age of maturity, you shouldn't be asking questions just to raise strife and, and contention and issues. You should be asking to understand or being quiet to listen or whatever whatever position or role. We, we, all, we all have moments of time where we have to be quiet and moments we have to talk and especially moments we have to listen. Right? Read on. Knowing that they breed strife. They breed strife. These foolish questions. Someone's just trying to get your goat. Someone's trying to get you off track. The adversary is trying to get you off the road. You see it all the time. I just think about driving again. You're on the road. You're going somewhere. They're, okay, there's a divided line. And it's two lanes going one way, let's say. you got to stay on the lines of the road. If you get outside of your, of your lane, maybe your car beeps at you now. If not, someone beside you is going to be giving you the beep as well in a different manner. It's going to jostle you and throw you off. Right? And, and while you're driving down the highway, man, oh, that's that road sign. Oh, there's a Cracker Barrel. There's a gift shop. There's a, an, oh, look at the beautiful trees and rocks. Look at the shiny things that are going to distract you. You got to stay on the road, stay on the, on the track and the path. And that path is what? It's right here. The law and the prophets. They were, those are pointing out Yahshua the Messiah, right? Written in your hearts and mind, not written in the flesh. Only it came in the came in the flesh to fulfill those things. You pay attention. You stay on the road. And you can go a lot of places on the road. Oh, it's limiting. There's people that are off road, but they still stay on the path within reason, right? Or if they're making their own path, they're not going to go right up against a cliff. Not going to get it there. They're going to go find the, the spot where there's a little bit of a clearing, and then run over some small little trees. But they're still staying away from the big trees. They're staying, you know, whatever it is. Okay, read on. And the servant of Yahweh must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, yeah. have to teach, patient. Yep. Don't strive, right? Look how good I am. Look, look what I've, you know, that happens. That's a degree of striving. And perhaps someone could look that up some other time or whatever else. When I think of striving, that's what I think about. People are striving to get ahead of somebody else, right? They think of the aim, to earnestly contend for the common salvation. Contending, com competition. But wait, while we're having that earnest contention, it's not to put somebody else down. It's to lift each other up. Lift your brother back. Lift up your brother, right? Well, you're contending. You're, who are you contending with? This adversary is not really a match for us, because but it's set up as a, a to give us that example for things not to be, but it's to give you that contrast, right? But those can, those demons are out there. They're trying to get it, get at you. The adversary is trying to get at you anyway, right? Don't strive. A recap from there. And the servant of Yahweh must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient. That's hard. It's hard to be gentle, apt to all men, apt to teach, humble. That's difficult. When you know something, you always purpose a plan. It's very difficult to be humble. Because you may walk in the church or point out to people you know that have been following the Lord God and Jesus their whole life and you point out they're wrong. It's easy. Look, see, I know something that they don't know and look how good I am. But wait, 
what you've learned and know and understand that Yahweh through Yahshua the Messiah has slowed you down and given you that revelation to show you these things. Be humble and apt, apt when you're dealing with people that are in this space. Or be humble and apt to deal with people that were over in this space that have been blinded by the veil put back in front of them. Humble and apt to teach. It's hard. Mm -hmm. I, I deal, I, I deal with this with my with my dad, and I talk about it periodically every so often. My dad was a member of the institute for, of the classes for about 25 years, an officer, did various things in the school, great, you know, whatever else. For those that remember him, he's just a, he's just a guy. Don't get me wrong, but for me as a kid growing up, listening to stories, sitting on the edge of him sitting on the edge of the bed talking about Samson and Moses and all these stories, it was it was moving, it was exciting. And as a kid growing up to conventions and stuff, you hear about the things, and then, you know, the, you go to seminars. That's what we would do, visit. Holland, go to Holland, visit relatives, or we go to Boston or New York or a New York State picnic or whatever else you pick it. But then for someone to, that would be able to speak and teach and set up things in the school to be an able class to continue and help other people in other countries learn about Yahweh's purpose and plan, to then not be teaching Yahweh's purpose and plan, that's heartbreaking. And it's easy for me to get excited about that and oh, you know, you get worked up and you want to be contentious and their blood's boiling and your head turns red, redder than it is right now, right? And, and you, you know, but you can be humble and have to teach. And you guys all know there's people that have been in these various classes that have wandered off. They played follow the leader, right? It's, it sounds cute, cutesy way to put it, but they played follow the leader because that's the way we're conditioned at work. We follow our boss. What does our boss do? What does our boss do? What does our leader do? Our supervisor, our foreman, our lead hand, whatever. We follow that which is set before us by traditions. But sometimes those leaders can be wrong. Sometimes they're right, but sometimes they can be wrong. And sometimes people leave companies for moral issues and, and values issues and treatment issues and stuff like that. You know, all those things. But those people have played follow the leader. It's, you know, you gotta be humble enough to teach because you never know what may happen. Read on. In meekness, instructing that those that wait a minute. In meekness, instructing those that oppose him. Yeah. If Yahweh perhaps if, will give them. If Yahweh perhaps make. I'm sorry. If Yahweh perhaps instructing like the death, burial, resurrection, blood, water, spirit, forty. As much as that may seem infantile for some people that are self-exalted, those are principles that set up and help you understand something. Yahweh's purpose and plan is following the pattern. And doing those things, while you teach those things, may Yahweh may bring peradventure them back in and give them understanding through His work and not you doing it. And how do we know that? Because when Peter went to Cornelius' house, he didn't want to go there at first. The vision had to be shown to him three times about the sheep coming down with the animals unclean, etc. But he went to his house. And there's a great chance for Peter to be exalted. Oh, he comes in the door of Cornelius' house and they hit the ground in front of him. Look, they're looking at me. No, the spirit in him doesn't do that. Get up. I'm a man just like you. And what does he do? He talks about the death, burial, resurrection of Yahshua the Messiah. And while he's doing that, that Holy Spirit is being poured out in that room. He's just giving a lecture. He's just giving, well, maybe if you record the length of, of the verses there, 90 seconds or whatever he's sharing, I mean, hung on a tree, died, buried, resurrected, according to the scriptures. He's just giving a lecture. Like, he's just giving what he received. And what's happening? Yahweh, through Yahshua Messiah, is pouring out the Holy Spirit in those Gentiles right there to bring it in. All according, according to promise, right? Humble enough to teach, right? Let's read on. If Yahweh perhaps will give them repentance, to the acknowledging of the truth. Yep, that he, Yahweh may give you and cause that in you, right? They may not, but you carry on. And you don't worry about it. The Yahweh work is work, and you stay focused and don't be discouraged. Read on. And that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. Yep. And while it says they may be recover themselves from the adversary, it's Yahweh that's doing it in them or through them with all the witnesses that they have around them. They're not doing it themselves. Right? If you're drowning, the chances are pretty good you're not going to be able to pull yourself out of the water. All of a sudden, it's not going to come to you. Oh, I'm drowning. Oh, wait, now oh, I'm going to remember how to swim. You know, you're drowning. You need to be in your Savior. And your Savior is Yahshua the Messiah. Let's go over to back to the scripture lesson in um, verse 8. Verse 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith Yahweh. So it was a great golf. 
Right? There's a great gulf between our thoughts and Yahweh's thoughts. There always has been, always will be. But when you think of Romans 1, 19 and 20, he gives us the opportunity to understand something about his purpose and plan, right? By those things that are made, right? right. There's a pattern that you can understand. That's merciful. Yahweh's just, right? Uh, let's go to Psalms 103 and 11. Or read, read verse 9, and then we'll go to Psalms 103 verse and 11. Verse 9. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts that's than a, your thoughts. That's a way for you to physically understand what he just told you in verse 8. Because verse 8 is you know, conceptually. But when you get to verse 9, you say, listen, just look at the heavens. And, you know, to show you there's that gap that you can understand something. It's merciful. If I just tell you some philosophical perspective, he's going to show you through nature how it works. Right? He's going to show you through nature that you, being earthbound, have the opportunity through the Holy Spirit to be like that caterpillar. Right? Still with the still with the same understanding of principles before because it's a it's a it is a creature that's going through metamorphosis, but it's no longer earthbound anymore. It's free, it has that liberty. Yeah, you got the Psalms 103 and 11. Psalms 103 and 11. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. Yeah. Fear is important, right? Again, it's just another reference to heavens being high and fear, right? There's that fear that's there. How you, you know, that's how you begin to learn things about Yahweh's purpose of plan is that fear and reverence. He's just. Deuteronomy 32, and let's start at 1 and read down a couple verses. And I'll get off the floor in a moment or two. Because if he doesn't give you the opportunity to learn something, then he's not just. Thirty-two and one. Thirty-two and one. Yep. Yes, please. Deuteronomy thirty-two and one. Give ear, O ye heavens. Oh, give and ear. I will speak. Did we just hear about an ear there early in the verse? Give ear. Incline your ear. Pay attention. Right. Read on. And I will speak and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. Yeah. My doctrine shall drop as the rain. My speech shall distill as the dew. Yeah, we saw the rain and distill and so forth. There's the mist distilled and the vegetation would grow there after they came out, you know, in the garden and, or after the garden and so forth before Noah, right? The mist is going to come up and water the plants. Otherwise, it'd be dry and dead, right? But you take that dew drops, you just distill them and put them all together. All of a sudden, you got a drop. And you put a whole bunch of those drops together, right? They were not void of water before the flood. So they're talking about something, but taking a small little bit of mist or maybe underneath a, a leaf petal might be a dew drop or something like that to show people that little dew drop underneath that leaf. Just imagine that multiplied so many times over and all of a sudden that water is coming from the top, the sides and bottom. It's coming from everywhere. All he has is just a little bit. But what Yahweh's power is magnifying is showing that he can take a little bit and do a lot. This gospel has moved mountains. This gospel has gone around the world. This gospel still goes around the world. The gospel still needs to be preached. The peace missions went to the rulers of the different countries. Right? When you go to the ruler, what's the ruler going to do? Are they going to listen to you and change or not? But most rulers think, what's in it for me? I'm the top dog. If I can keep people in darkness longer, I can keep my power longer. You know that. I, I watch on YouTube, sometimes I watch them, the, the World War II... Uh, German war propaganda clips, you know, and the war's going bad, and they show a bunch of veterans skiing down the hill and stuff like that, and trying to put the paws aside, and some Frau lines bringing some milk and cheese to the veteran, you know, to try to put the paws of spin, but the war wasn't going well. If you keep people in darkness, they'll believe that long, 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 and that adversary wants to keep people in darkness continually. Okay, read on. As the small rain upon the tender herb, and as the showers upon the grass, because I will publish the name of Yahweh, ascribe ye greatness unto our Elohim. He's publishing the name of Yahweh. Now you think, publish, oh, a book, paper, great, encyclopedia. Those are great resources, but he's publishing, and when you go to someone and listen to someone breathing, that's publishing. It's proclaiming. You know, not on print. It's imprinting on your eyes, watching somebody breathe. You watch the lung, you know, go up and down. That's part of the breathing process. And then your ears are being percolated by listening. Listen, they're making a sound. They're saying Yahweh, especially when someone's about to pass. 
right? When Mike Townsend from Arcport passed, I, I spent a little bit of time a few days before he passed, just sitting, he was just laying there in the bed and stuff like that. The time was going to come. He just sat there quietly, just listening to breathe. Right. You know, and for someone that was a teacher, he would beat himself up because he was a school teacher and could teach photography and arts. And boy, and yet when it comes to teaching the gospel and stuff like that, it would be it would be hard. Yes. Right. But wait, you go with the talents and gifts you have. And some people are one on one people and some people are are science people. or Some people are big orators and stuff like that. But just the simple message of yeah, way. I'm not breathing probably just for auditory purposes, but when you're just breathing the name of Yahweh is making that proclamation. That's enough of a testimony in itself when you recognize with all humility that He's giving you that breath. You may decide sometimes to breathe deep because you're stressed out, but you're not telling yourself every second and every couple seconds to breathe, right? Right. You're not. It's involuntary. It's His purpose. And when He wants to shut it off, He does. It's off. That's it. You may have things you want to accomplish in your life that you can't get to, but he's shutting it off. And we're all mere moments, seconds away, twinkling of an eye away from having whatever we think in the flesh and what we want to accomplish in the flesh being ended and completed. Right? Yep. When I look at Mike sitting there, any hopes and dreams, his ability to play guitar, his ability to write music or take pictures, it is all wrapped up in that physical body in his brain, but it can't come out of there because that purpose in Yahweh's is wrapped up and completed waiting for that last breath <laughs> and for the family members to pick up the pieces after that and look back and look introspectively what can you do differently what can you learn from the process you go with your last breath in this gospel and you keep preaching that's what those guys did when Saul and Paul was threatened and beaten and escaped out of prison and stuff like that they weren't cutting and running and hiding they were going even though they know they were going to be having a hard time even though they were going to have a hard time <laughs> And you read about that in the, the 10th chapter of, nope, the 11th chapter of Hebrews near the end, the last couple of verses. Sawn asunder, destitute, living in caves. Yeah. We see it in cities, people living in a tent city, and that's horrible, and it's discouraging. How could our fellow North Americans be living in a tent city around the highway or downtown? How could that possibly be in a land of plenty? But it's the way that is. It's types and shadows to pay attention to, be exceedingly grateful for. Go on to the, in Deuteronomy there, go on, uh, recap three. Three, because I will publish the name of Yahweh. Ascribe ye greatness Thank unto you. our Elohim. Yep, you ascribe the greatness and give the glory unto Yahweh. Yes. Right, that's where the glory goes. Yes. You know, even the Ashram Messiah, you know, Yahweh's a unity. He said, give the, you know, glorify me as I was before, you know, way back before the heavens and earth were. Yeah, well, people are looking at him as the flesh, but this is the manifestation. Yahweh is a unity. These things are demonstrated and shared and spoken of for us to understand something, to understand that Yahweh is operating with one spirit, but two different manifestations, but one purpose. Okay, next verse. He is the rock. His work is perfect. For all his ways are judgment, an Elohim of truth and without iniquity. Just and right is he. That's right. Just and right is He, right? And He gives you a way to understand something. If He didn't give you a way to understand something about Him, then He would not be just. And He gave a pattern back here in this pattern as we read every, every class. No, we'll knock the chart yeah. down, Lionel. Every class, you know, Moses is told, he comes up the mountain, shown a vision here in the, t in, the, in the mountain to make a tabernacle just like it in the wilderness of Sinai, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly as you saw in the vision. But Moses wasn't building it. Uh, Olia, Bezalel, those guys were building it, but they were filled with what? The whole, their own intuition, their own skills, and good, no. good labor or trades? No. Nope. They were filled with the Holy Spirit of craftsmanship and workmanship. So what they had received was the same as what Moses received, because Yahweh is a unity. So they're building it, and Moses is the foreman, for lack of a better term, <laughs> sees that it's matching up. Yeah. It's fit, matching the blueprint that he saw, the people doing the work, and that's beautiful. And when this temple is built over here, those rocks, those stones were fitly framed together. You didn't have to shim them up. They right. fit right in. If I was doing a door or something like that, there'd be shims everywhere, duct tape everywhere. It'd be bad news. <laughs> You'd be condemned. <laughs> right? Uh, go down back to the scripture. But he always just. He gives you something to know about him. And otherwise, you'd be unjust. He'd be the adversary who's going to leave you in murkiness. He's going to tell you a little bit over here, a little bit over there. But wait, not the over here and over there like a precept and line upon here and there. He's going to tell you, wait, wait, you're going to know about, you can't learn about your God or Yahweh until you're dead. And that's how it gets people. Right? Wait on it. 
some things you wait on, you wait on the revelation for some things while you're still alive, but other things, you don't want to wait to know Yahweh while you are, when you're dead. You want to do it while you have the opportunities, the scripture says in verse 6. All these things work together. The purpose, the rain coming down, accomplishes His will to bring up that, you know, it doesn't just rain to rain. You may see it sometimes, well, the grass isn't turning right away. It has to get in the soil. It's got to begin, uh, what's happening at the soil is the start of that germination, the seeds are starting to get ready. And when they're going to pop up, they're making that Y coming up, right? The stem and leaves coming off, a whole bunch of Ys. Anyway, it's so beautiful. I'm looking forward to having a seat, looking forward to being edified by the next speaker. Thanks for the opportunity. Peace and love in Yashua. Hello from Rhonda, Brazil, by the way. I've been asked to be the next speaker, so. and I really enjoyed the remarks of the first speaker. Pretty stimulating, and it's just fun to be together again. Too. <laughs> it's been a while, and I missed everybody. You know, I was. I think last time I, I was in a live class here was in beginning of January. You know, and then we're gone. And then the weather. So it's been a while. So greetings from everyone in Tampa. That's who we were. You know class that we were attending while we were down there and that was really enjoyable and it was really warm and it was really nice and it was so enjoyable and then you come back here and it's, they're telling me uh, Lori was saying there's a color that should, uh, should send it into um, Sherwin Williams or one of those Syracuse Gray that's what they call it there's, there's a color Syracuse Gray yep. Yep. so that's what we're going to be known for right anyway that's the difference that the sun makes when the sun's out. You just feel so much better. You really do. I mean, physically even. Mm -hmm. My knees didn't bother me at all when I was in Florida. <laughs> it's just the heat. You can feel it goes right into your bones. Yeah. You know, it's like it's like it. It's a manifestation of that. Um, the sun is a manifestation of the sun, and how this makes you feel the inner man. It warms your bones. Then you know. This is the right thing for your inner man. It makes it right. It makes you feel better about it. So, um, Lionel was, or, um, yeah, I think it was you, talk about gratitude. Um, so, can we look up gratitude? There's a few things he said that were very stimulating. And I also want revelation from a dictionary, and then on your phone, or wherever, look up Yahweh. Probably on your phone, because that's where I looked up Yahweh, and that's what I was going to work with. Yeah, we had a nice time down in um, in Tampa, being able to share the gospel and to hear the gospel from, you know, the brethren there. Fortunate enough, they have a room they can have class twice a week, and then they Zoom once, so that's that's nice. And they actually, while we're at, uh, at um, Chuck and Jennifer's, they also do Oceanside and they do Green Bay. So there's like class every single night. They're doing something to go with class. And it's like, you know, Jennifer and I took a night off. We're like, okay. <laughs> like you said, sometimes you just need a time off to let stuff soak and work in. And yeah, there's a lot of stuff out there. It can be overwhelming. It can just sometimes be like too much, you know. People don't always have the same big appetite. Some people have a big appetite, some people have a smaller appetite. Anyway, did we get gratitude? Gratitude takes, it says agreeable, and then it takes you back to grateful. Okay. Grateful, appreciative of benefits received, thankful, mm -hmm. affording pleasure, gratifying, welcome, um, expressing gratitude. Mm -hmm. Show appreciation for? Yep. Okay. And so that's the gratitude, and that's because we've been shown something, like we've shown over here how this veil being removed, this veil's taken away, revealing the truth. Now, this, this is a revelation right here. Yeah. And you know, people have, we've tried to pull the veil away and show them that this is the truth and show witnesses for it and how, you know, where it comes from and how you breathe the name Yahweh and it's masculine and feminine and within himself. And that's why um, Adam was made in his likeness and he was, you know, Eve was within Adam. You got witnesses for this stuff. We're not just saying that because we want you to believe something that we believe. It's because we have witnesses for it. But, you know, you can pull that veil away 
And if it's not revealed by the Holy Spirit, they're not going to get it. It's the Holy Spirit that does revealing. We can teach, you know, preach, teach all we want. It's really the Holy Spirit that's doing that. He's the teacher. So if anybody gets it, it's because the Holy Spirit revealed it to them. Right? So then you're, you're grateful when you've been shown something. In the end of my, when I looked up gratitude, uh, show appreciation for and to return the kindness. That's what gratitude was. So you, you do something to return the kindness. And to me, I was thinking, well, we don't, we can't return. There's no, what can we do for Yahweh Elohim? There's nothing we can do for him outside of praising him, you know, like that. But some, now there's a new thing like um, instead of returning a kindness, you pay it forward. Pay it forward. And that's kind of how we do it. We like, we try to put it out there for anybody that wants it. That wants the truth. We try to put it out there. And like Leon, Le, uh, Lionel, like Lionel was saying, it's on the internet now and it's all, it's all over the world. And it's, um, and it's just Yahweh working his work. And to me, it's just crazy how some people came to class and how people are just finding us on the internet. You know how much stuff is out there on the internet? And to somebody just be kind of scrolling through and to come to one of our, happen upon something, and then to have it make sense to them, yep. that blows my mind. Yep. That's really mind blowing. Because I've had people, you know, I've told them about our, our uh, web, or not our web, our YouTube station, and they watch it and they go, I, I, don't, I don't get it. I, I didn't get anything out of it. And I'm like, oh, you know? And so for me to see someone that actually watches it without somebody sitting there explaining stuff to them, they actually get something out of it and they're bothered to keep with it and stick with it and keep doing it and enjoying it. And that to me is like oh, the Holy Spirit's operating, no doubt about it, because nothing that you or I did about that. That's just the Holy Spirit working. And he's, he's working it. He's doing it. Now, if I could have um, Revelation looked up. Revelation, act of revealing the disclosing to others of what was before unknown to them. Something that was not known to you before is shown to you or revealed. And that's when you came into class. Did you already know the name Yahweh? Maybe some of you did. I sure didn't. That was totally new to me. But then once somebody said, oh, his name's Yahweh, and they had to, you know, go to Salve or the Syracuse Library and look it up, and sure enough, it was in all the encyclopedias that I looked in. It was in every single one, just like they had told me down here. It was there. And then I felt totally confident in telling something else. The name's Yahweh, because I know. I looked it up. I found it out for myself. And it was like, you, when you can, uh, it's easy to talk about something you understand. You understand it and you see it. It's easy to tell somebody else about it. When you don't know and you're trying to fake it, they're going to see right through you. But when you know the stuff, you've looked it up, and you know, and you've checked it out, and you understand it. It's been revealed to you, and you know who revealed it to you was the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit in you is revealing the stuff to you. So it's a revelation, something you didn't know before. You didn't know his name before. You might have heard it, but it wasn't revealed. You know, because I'm sure I heard it before, but it never caught my attention until it was until it was shown to me, really revealed to me, then I kept hearing it. I even went to church and heard it after that. And I thought, I never heard it. Now you hear it all over the place. You know, I did when, fir when you first came to that. So Revelation, um, something that uh, a sub in my dictionary said, a surprising and previously unknown fact. And I thought that was kind of fun because when you first came in here, were you surprised at what you heard? Mm -hmm. I was. Mm -hmm. I was really surprised. I couldn't believe that. Mm -hmm. I was just so shocked that I didn't know any of this. And where it, where it had been all been hiding all my life. And why didn't anybody tell me before? Right. You know? And so that... <clears throat> So that, to me, really, that's the revelation of it. He really revealed it. Now, on your phone, if you could get Yahweh. And see what it says there. Just Google Yahweh. I 
Anybody got a phone? Everybody left their phones. Yahweh, home. the name for the God of the Israelites, representing the biblical pronunciation of Y H W H, the Hebrew name revealed to Moses in the book of Exodus. The name Y H W H, consisting of the sequence, the sequence of consonants Yud He Wa He, is known as the Tetragrammaton. Okay, can you start it again for me, Deb? Yahweh, name for the God of the Israelites. Now, right there, you got to stop because that's the name of the God of the Israelites. That's what they're saying. Mm -hmm. yep. So that would make you think, oh, then what's the name of the God of the Christians? <laughs> what's the name of the God of the of the other ones? The other, you know, of the Baptists, the Methodists. What's the name of their God? There's only supposed to be one God in all those religions, Judaism, Christianity, and uh, even um, Islam say there's only one God. Yet right here, it's, it's insinuating that there's more than one, because it's one of the Israelites, yep. you know? Yep. So it's just confusion right from the get-go. And we know that there's only one name. There's one purpose. There's one Messiah. There's one baptism. When you think about it, he tries to make it pretty simple and easy for us. There's just one. There's only one creator, and his name is Yahweh. So one of my favorite quotes is Ephesians 4.4, 4, but I don't want to go there now. That's just, it just runs down all those ones, and you can run right through the book and show yeah. how, you know. And when you talk to people, they're believing in water baptism. And when you show them there's only one baptism, which is it? Is it by water or is it by spirit? Which one do you want, you know? You can, yes. you can get them to think sometimes, but usually they're, they're, it's not revealed. They're just going to put it on, you know, they're don't, not that interested in knowing about their Creator. Now, um, go to go the Scripture reading again. Okay. Go back there. And I think I want to pick it up down um, where uh, the water comes down, water the earth, that part. Yep. That would be Isaiah 55, and let's pick it up at 9. And I want to tell you what I want to explain to you, what I, wa what I want to share with you, is that the way that this Godhead works is just like the water cycle. It comes down, it has an effect, and it goes back up. And that's pretty simple. I, right. and, I, and you can probably all go home and understand, you know what I'm talking about, but I'm going to break it down a little bit more than that. Okay. Just, so. so Isaiah 55 and 10. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven. Okay, now this isn't, it wasn't in Exodus. He said, see that I have talked with you from heaven. When he talked the Ten Commandments, he said, I spoke with you from heaven. Now this was when Moses was up here in the mount for the 40 days with Joshua, who, you know, is Yahweh Elohim. And these Ten Commandments were spoken down. So he spoke with them to the children of Israel from heaven. So, and then... He came, came down from heaven, too. Um, I want author and finisher. Hebrew, is it Hebrews? No. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12, one? Is that? I want that. Just because this is another amazing thing that was a revelation that I never heard explained or understood till I came down here and it was explained to me. And how Joshua, the son of Nun, is back here with Moses. And that can be proven in your Bible. You, there's all kinds of scriptures about it. But it was just never brought to my attention before I was brought down here. And it helps you to understand the Godhead. How Yahweh, pure spirit here, and he takes on this visionary shape and form. And th that's the one that Moses and the 74 elders, they, see, they saw God, right? They saw him. So then over in your book in John 1, 18, where it says no man has seen God at any time, it can be so confusing. But once you understand the Godhead, the Yahweh, pure spirit, nobody can lay an eye on that because it's not a physical thing. It's spirit. It's pure spirit. And so you're not going to lay your eyeballs on that. So nobody's seen Yahweh the Father at any time. But now these 74 elders, they say they saw God. And what they saw is Yahweh Elohim when he took on this shape and form. So there's Yahweh, pure spirit, Yahweh in shape and form that these 74 saw. And the, these guys, Peter, James, and John, Mo, uh, Moses and John, appeared in the vision to them 
witnessing Yahshua and his transfiguration over here. So there's an elder and two, two brothers, an elder and two brothers. You've got 70 elders, you've got the 70 chosen. You've got the same thing repeated so that you can have confidence. You know, when something happens only once, it's, you know, it's not, a, um, it's not typical, it's not normal. Like most of our weather now, it's not normal. They'll go, this has never happened before. This has never happened before, right? Don't they say that in the weather now? This is a first. This has never happened before. But this, um, so he took on shape and form here. And these guys saw it, and then they saw that. So there's two witnesses to the fact that Yahweh can take on this shape and form, a visionary shape and form. And over here, he outshone the noonday sun. And over here, when Moses was exposed to it, when he went up that mount that third time and came down with the second tablet, he had to wear the veil because he, the glory was reflected on, uh, from him. So, <clears throat> so here he is, and then he comes down from heaven. He's, oh, let's get author and finisher. Hebrews 12 and 2. Yes. Looking unto Yahshua. Oh, go ahead, right? Go ahead, too. Oh. <laughs> Looking unto Yahshua, the author and finisher of our faith, for the for who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of Elohim. Right. Joy that was set before him. Joy to be crucified? That's kind of an odd thing to say. But he knew the outcome of it. That, Like uh, we were working with the circles over here. That how, see in the beginning, he's by himself. And then there's a Yahweh's purpose. And at the end, there's something going on. There's an increase. There's a multiplication. Just like he made Adam was a type. And he said, go forth what? Be fruitful and multiply. Right. That was Adam's instruction. And Adam's a reflection of that spirit. And that's that's why the, the spirit's going to go forth and multiply. So that's why he's poured a spirit out at Pentecost, multiplied in, in mankind. So he's got Yahweh Elohim. You've got Yahweh pure spirit. You've got Yahweh Elohim. And at the same time, you've got Yahshua in the flesh here. All three at the same time. And do you know that um, any matter, this was news to me, any matter, there is a, under certain conditions, now I'm not going to remember the name of it, there's a point, I'm going to forget the name of it. I talked about it when I was down Tampa because we were nuts and around with it and we found it. There's a point where it, an element will be in solid, liquid, and uh, gaseous at a certain point a certain temperature, a certain pressure, every single element, you can get it to be in all three forms at the same time. It can happen in the physical. And I forgot what the name of it is. Something point. Plasma? No, no, it's not plasma. I'll, I'll try to find it in my notes after whatever. But um, <clears throat> so anyway, Yahweh, pure spirit, is the source and substance of everything. Everything that we see, everything that you are, can touch, feel, that is spirit materialized. And Einstein did his thing to explain that to you. Energy is mass and mass is energy that's reversible. So everything's made out of pure spirit, but this, this pure spirit doesn't take all pure spirit to make this. comes into this heavenly shape and form and, uh, to communicate with the prophets down here, with these guys here, and all through the prophets and over here. And then the same spirit is manifesting in a physical body here, living with them in the wilderness. And they're totally unaware that that's the creator walking amongst them. And you've got um, <clears throat> over there in um, Deuteronomy someplace, it talks about when you go abroad to ease thyself, take a shovel with you. And what comes out of you, you dig a hole and you bury it because Yahweh, your Elohim, doesn't want to step in your doo-doo. Right. That's pretty much what it says there. So he's in a physical body here, right? So you've got him here speaking in that Ten Commandments, which was initializing this Mosaic Covenant. That's the start of it, right? Gives him the Ten Commandments, and he gives another 600 and whatever that you read about in Exodus. So here he is author, authoring this Mosaic Covenant. He's the author of it. And then... 
time goes on and he comes in as the finisher. Doesn't he say to fulfill? Mm -hmm. It's all the way through the New Testament. He's talking about the, the New Testament that's in your book, not the New Testament in you, the spirit in you, but in the book, in your Bible, in the part that's considered the New Testament, all the way through there, he's talking about how he came in to fulfill. And I don't know if we need to get a couple, want to get a couple just to verify that so that you can see that uh, mm -hmm. I'm not making this stuff up. It is all in your book. And if you, you know, you need help finding it, just let us know or ask somebody, where is that in the book? Or we'll help you find it because we're not trying to. It's triple point. Yeah. Is that what yeah. it is? We just look and saw it, yeah, triple point. Triple point. And every oh. single element has okay. a triple point. Every single one of them. And it just kind of blew my mind. Because I know water, that's, t you know, you got, you know, I got ice in a glass over there and it condenses and the outside of the glass is why it's on, there's an ice cubes in there. So there's all three right there. Water, you can see that happen. You know, you can understand that. But every single element will do that. It's like, oh, well, that makes sense because every single element, where does it come from? The same stuff, same spirit, just a different makeup of the same stuff. To get that, you want Luke twenty four forty four. Good, yeah, that's a good one. And he said unto them, "This is Yahshua speaking." This is when he's in the flesh. This is this is fourteen ninety by, and so the Israelites are worshiping this way. That they're told to worship by this tabernacle pattern. So they are, and they drag it over. Well, they don't drag it. They drag it around the wilderness for forty years. Then they get over to Canaan's land, and they build the temple. That temple's wrecked, they build another one. That temple's wrecked, and Herod builds another one. But it's not to be physical. It's This is to point to the spiritual. And that's why this tabernacle was like nothing compared to the temple. It's trying to show you that this is a physical, this is typifying the spiritual temple, which is not physical, but this is the example. Right. And it's so much more glorious than this was. It's so much bigger, it's so much... Uh, it's loaded with gems and jewels and gold and it's fancy pantsy stuff. It's not, this is just dragged around the desert and looking like something, you know, the cat dragged in after a while. I mean, there was gold and stuff on the inside, but you couldn't tell that from looking at it from the outside. It was covered with skins and furs and not much to look at at all. Where this one was really glorious to look at. The sun bouncing off of that gold dome, you couldn't even stand to look at it. So... Um, go ahead. These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. So all the time that Moses is written, reading his five books and all the prophets, what they're really writing about is Yahshua Messiah. Now that's a revelation. Amazing. A lot of people don't know that, that that's what the book's about. And that's what it's about. And then when you go over to Revelation, just read Revelation 1.1. 1, 1. So I'm trying to see how he's the author, he authorized this Mosaic Covenant. He came in and he fulfilled it or took it out of the way. He's the one that brought it in. He's the one that took it out. He's the one that is indwelling in you and doing the work now. Revelation 1.1. 1, 1. The revelation of Yahshua the Messiah, which Yahweh gave unto him to show unto his servants things which much which must shortly come to pass, and he sent and signified it by an angel unto his servant John. So the revelation of Yahshua the Messiah. That's what we sit under every time we come to class. That's what we're here about. We're not here for any other reason. We want to know our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah. Right. That Yahweh is salvation. Yahshua means Yahweh is salvation. So every time you come down here, you're getting more and more about how he provided your salvation, how he did it, how you are saved. And you don't have to worry about that. And you're in the kingdom now. Let's have the ninth aim, if we could. The ninth aim, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained there is no other name mm, given among one, men. One, tenth. 
10? <laughs> Sorry. To inherit eternal life now. Yes, now. See, to inherit eternal life now. And uh, Lionel was talking about how Christianity, they tell you, you got to wait till you die to, to, find, to find out about God. It's not so. You have been lied to. This mystery of iniquity is such a good liar. He's got everybody fooled. And then when you get your eyes open, you turn around, you try to tell somebody else, they don't want to hear it. They're very comfortable. I've had people tell me that. Don't tell me anymore. I don't want to know. Talk to the hand. I don't want to know anymore. Because you're upsetting my, my boat. I've got a nice little boat here. And I don't want it rocked. Right. Stop telling me stuff like that. They've said that to me. Like, okay. So, that mystery of iniquity has got everybody asleep, blinded. And we're out there. We're trying to rattle some cages. Trying to get somebody to think about it. And I always remember Mitchell saying, get the cobwebs out. Start to think about it. Because we just never did before. He didn't think about God. He thought you'd leave it to the priest or whatever. You don't have to think about God. So go ahead with that tenth. To inherit, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. See? with the hope of immortal glorification in the kingdom now. So you've got eternal life now. You're in the kingdom now. So all we're waiting for is to, for that flesh to drop. That's all. That's, you know, that uh, first death, because the second death will have no effect on you. You're going to just go on. So actually, you could say that these two ages are alike. It's just that this one we don't have the flesh in, and this one we're still hanging, this flesh is still here. But once that flesh is gone, it's still, it's still the same thing. Kingdom here, it's the same kingdom here. Eternal life here, it's the same eternal life here. It's the same thing. It's just, you just got to drop the flesh. Now, um, so with the water cycle over in the scripture, it talks about, we'll go back to that. Yeah. <clears throat> so 10 again. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and return not thither, but watereth the earth, <clears throat> and maketh bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. Okay, now just think about it. See, this Holy Spirit, it came down, manifest in the flesh, and it gave us this law, which was something for the children of Israel to live by. And it did give, you know, we, he talked about the manna that fell from heaven. It, it yeah. gave them the seed actually, you know, came down from heaven. They gathered it in twice as much on Saturday or Sunday? Friday because Friday. Friday it would be because Sabbath was Saturday. Right. So they gathered twice as much on Friday so that it would sustain them through the Sabbath on Saturday because you couldn't do any work on that, that day, right? So there's just so much and it's just, it's just locked up so beautifully that... Um, he just he just keeps impressing me more and more all the time. You know, I just you just can't believe he's done all this for us. So um, so he comes down from heaven to water the earth. He gives them this covenant, and he stays with the children of Israel. And he goes through all this, and he goes through the death, burial, and resurrection. Now, if he hadn't come down and done this, just imagine if all the water stayed up in the clouds and never came down to the earth. What? What would happen? It would not be good for us. The no. earth would not survive. That water, it's got to come down. Remember California was in a drought because they didn't have enough snow in the mountains? Their drought is over now. They're having floods and 12 feet of snow in northern California. The drought's over. But they have to have that water come down and water the earth. They have to have that because then it gets into the rivers and every place it's got to get and waters the earth so that they're, you know, like think of the Nile, how it used to flood and then they would, it would be all really nice, fertile. loamy, fertile soil and they'd plant it and, and then they'd have give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Right. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. This is the word. Shall not return unto me void. But it's going to accomplish that to which I send it. What's he send it? Down here to set up the law. Here to fulfill the law. Take it out and have the Holy Spirit poured out. That's what it's for. That's how he's watering the earth to bring forth and bud. Give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be. That's exactly what he did. He sent forth, he came forth, set it up, fulfilled it. It had a, he had a purpose, which is salvation of souls. And that, that spirit did 
did that, saved souls. And you guys are witnesses. You are the souls he saved. And so he poured out that Holy Spirit on the, uh, the day of Pentecost, filled them with that, and that Spirit has been available ever since. And it's been our job. That Holy Spirit is determined to let to give witness to the people in this creation and let them know there's salvation. There is soul salvation. It's available. Now, whether you want to try to pull that veil back over it and pretend it's not available, it's up to you. And Yahweh's going to decide for you whether you're going to see it or you're not going to see it. It's not even anything we can do. There's nothing any of us can do about it. Just preach the truth, and if it has an effect on someone, that's because the Holy Spirit had an effect on them. You know, it's not, we can't take any credit, any, you know, just uh, have to appreciate where we sit and that we do sit and we see how we have benefited. I think you'd pretty much say that. Yes. You've benefited from the whole, from Yahweh Elam taking on shape and form, coming in, bringing in this covenant that. You know, when Paul, this lot, he talked about, he'd always go back and talk to the Gentiles, right? He was the, the one that went talk to the Gentiles, pretty much. They always left a Jew in charge of each one of those classes because they knew the law. And then the Gentiles, they'd have to teach the Gentiles something about the law to make them understand something about the New Covenant. Mm -hmm. That's what they did. That's what Paul did. And that's how we were brought in here, too. They, you know, back to the Law and the Prophets, right? You had to know something about the Law and the Prophets in order to understand what was going on with your Creator, yeah. how He's working His purpose. And that's what Paul always did. It's taken back to Law and the Prophets. It's all the way through your book. That's why when you come down here, most often, they're going to take you back to the Law and the Prophets. Because that's where the story is. You've got to get that basic under you before you can understand how the Holy Spirit could have been poured out here when you don't even know about a Holy Spirit. You didn't know about a Holy Spirit before you came down here. You did not. You didn't. And so now you do know and you understand the Holy Spirit. You understand how He operates, by what pattern He operates, how to look for Him, how to identify the Holy Spirit, how, how it operates, and and you get to appreciate each other because you know it's operating in each other and it's just so then you think that they talk about brotherly love how can you not love someone that's got that spirit in them you might not like their personality you might not like the way they dress you might not like much else about them but if the real thing's in them you're going to love them you're not going to be rude. You're not going to be short with them. You're not going to be mm -mm, none of that. And we're, I think that's in your book someplace that uh, if you love Yahweh, you're going to love the brethren. Something like to that effect. You can't, you can't say you love your brother or you love Yahweh and not love your brother. Something like that. You're, you're a liar. You're lying. You can't do it. So with that, I'm going to take my seat and see who the next speaker is. Thank you for your attention. And our next speaker this evening will be the uh, President, Dr. Robert Welch. Good evening, everyone. Um, very happy to be here. Um, it was just a lot brought out tonight. And I, I just got a couple things that I was thinking about. So I'll just kind of go back over my notes here a little bit. Um, let's see. I was thinking about these scribes and ther uh, Pharisees, right? <clears throat> um, there's a point where Yahshua really points them out. 
and we're, we know that they really represent what this mystery of iniquity did to somebody in authority, in authoritative position, because they were the ones that are called the lawyers, were the ones that knew the law. <clears throat> so I don't know exactly where this is. Um, Matthew 23, I think. For that, um, where he calls them thieves and robbers. Anybody that came before me, I don't think that was in the 23rd, but that's a, that's a good one too. I'm not sure where it is. Thieves and robbers? Uh, maybe in John? John 10, 8. Yeah, thank John you, thank 10. you. <clears throat> John 10, 8. Hmm. John 10 and 8. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. Oh, this is John. This is the sheep chapter, right? Yes, this is the story um, of the sheep. Can we pick it up a little higher? Sure. Just to catch catch what's going on here. So the sheep are representative of what? Those that are coming in to try to learn about Yahshua. Right. Right. The sheep are the the ones that he's trying to protect. He's trying to grow them up. He's leading them in pastures, right? Yeah. Talking about clean water, leads them to the clean water. It's it's the sheep's protection or the herd's protection, right? Um, What's the scripture? John it's 10? John the 10th. John 10. Yeah. Um, I'm going to pick it up at one, Bob. Okay. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door unto the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. So you're talking about a sheepfold, or you got, you know, you picture uh, a fence in the country with all these sheep in it. Yep. And there's a door. Yep. Right? There appears to be a door. And he's talking about somebody coming a different way. Could you repeat yes. that part? But, um, uh, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. So there's thieves and robbers amongst these sheep. Right. So there's a door, and the only one that's going to come through the door is the shepherd. Right. Right, or the good shepherd. He's coming through the door. Okay, continue but on. he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Okay, go ahead. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. So there's a porter, there's a doorman. Yep. And okay, he he's, he's going to open to him. Yep. And he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Now, he knows the sheep by name. Mm -hmm. He has an interest. I mean, to know your sheep by name... Each one of them has a personality, doesn't it, Trish? Oh, yeah. They're all a little different. Aren't we all a little different? Yeah. We're like sheep gone astray, right? Yeah. So they all have a personality, and he knows them all. He knows which one's going to cut out and run, do get lost and all that. Go ahead, Trish. And when he puts forth his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for so, they know his voice. So he's leading, like Yash Messiah, right? He came in to fulfill this covenant that Peg was talking about, but he had 12 around him, right? 12 disciples, mm -hmm. 12 around 12 tribes camped around this. And I was really thinking about this too, how these, this pattern that Yahweh puts into this creation, how everything goes by it. We have patterns within patterns. You know what I mean? Yeah. So <clears throat> here you have this threefold um, pattern of the tabernacle um, pattern, right? That was built in the wilderness. But now that's put in there. And now this whole area um, geographically was going according to the pattern as well. So you've got a pattern going on with a pattern here. And then you start looking at things in here. Oh, wait, this is three in one, right? So you've got patterns within patterns. And that's the way your physical body is. You're built with cells. You're built with um, these things that um, already go by the pattern. And now you're now you're looking at your body that obviously we talk about down here going according to the tabernacle perfectly. And these patterns are within patterns, right? So that's something maybe we can touch a little more on. But uh, go ahead, Trish. So five. <clears throat> and a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. So, and we've come down here, and we, you know, there's a, there's a transcript, right? 
I've heard a voice from heaven. Yep. I remember Rick working with it there one yep. time, <clears throat> right? So we have come down here and we've heard a voice from heaven. Didn't that voice come out of that mountain up there? Yeah. Yeah. Right? And that's, <clears throat> there was a base of the mountain, speaking of patterns within patterns, there was a plateau, I believe it's called, or they talk about it as a plateau. And then Moses went alone and by himself all the way up into the, you know, to get the pinnacle of the hill or the top of the mountain. <clears throat> so you've got a threefold thing going on here, right? So <clears throat> um, let's continue, please. This parable spake Yahshua unto them. But they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. So and he... Go, um, could you repeat that? I'm sure. Sorry. This parable spake Yahshua unto them. So this is Yahshua the Messiah. He's walking around in the flesh and he's teaching his disciples that are walking around him. He's got 12 around him and sometimes he had a whole lot more than that, right? Many of them followed him. <clears throat> so he's, he's leading them. He's teaching them. Go ahead, Trish. But they understood not what so, things they uh, I want you to repeat that last one, the uh, parable. I want the parable. Okay. This parable spake Yahshua unto them, mm -hmm. but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. So this parable, so Yahshua was walking around with them, and he's using the creation. Right? We talk about uh, Romans 1, 19 and 20. We always go there to show yep. the physical reveals the spiritual. And it's so simple. And that's what this got, that's what caught us in this gospel, the simplicity of it. That's right. We saw that our everybody's walking around with a physical body. If you got one, you got a problem. Because we go what? We go according to his great pattern. Right. And I think it even says, somebody mentioned this, that it's a perfect example of the Godhead or something along the... What this physical body is doing is a working, functioning pattern of his purpose. You're living, that's life, from a physical standpoint, right? <clears throat> and that's showing you that there's life that has to, there has to be a spiritual part of that. And that's what this, these parables are about. He's shown us this whole creation. I want to get, um, Deb, if you could get Matthew 13. And uh, um, so we're talking about a parable. He's right. talking about sheep. Yahshua Messiah, he's leading, leading them around, yeah. and he's using the creation. What's right in front of them. They can't deny that they're sheep. Right. There they are standing there, right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Trish. <laughs> then said Yahshua unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, right. I am the door of the sheep. Now he's the door of the, sh the sheep, right? He is the door, and you can get that over there, right? Yeah. How Yahshua said, I was the door. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. Now all that came before Yahshua the Messiah were thieves and robbers, right? Guess what? We could add to that. A whole lot of them that came after are thieves and robbers as well, right? Th that those principles carry on because this mystery of iniquity, see the sheep down here? You got Moses, 80 years old, leading the sheep, <clears throat> right? And how those sheep were, um, Israel was brought up out of the will, uh, Egypt into the wilderness of Sinai, and eventually, now who was leading the sheep? Or who was leading Israel? Wasn't there a cloud down here? Mm -hmm. And remember up here with Moses, <clears throat> Yahweh Elohim tells him, you go down there in Egypt and take, take my people and bring them up out of there. And what did he say? You remember what he said to him? He said, I will be with you. Yeah. He said, I will be with you. And remember he, he said over there too, that's another clue. He said, I heard their... Cry. I heard their cry down there. Yeah. He heard it. He was down there, right? And so here, Yahshua himself is down here. We come to find out, as, as Peg was talking about, that that revelation is that this is not the first time this guy showed up. He showed up somewhere before. And he said, Moses, I'll be with you. And you know what? I just read that where you talk about when Moses goes down there, he took his whole family with him. His kids, his wife, took them all with him. When, and he wasn't too certain about the whole thing at first. But when you take your whole family down there into the unknown, he hadn't been there in 40 years. He knew that the, old, the other 
that that Pharaoh was powerful. He, and he relied on Yahshua to take us. You know, on that chapter over in Hebrews where it talks about they had faith and they did this and, the, you know, the mouth yeah. of the lions. <clears throat> Yeah. Well, you could add that to Moses. Moses took his whole family down there. Mm -hmm. I'd put that right over in Hebrews, right? <clears throat> so he had that kind of faith in that purpose of Yahweh, see? Yep. So we're talking parables here. We're talking parables and how these things, and ultimately how Yahshua is able to bring them up out of there into a good land, a land flowing with milk and honey, right? Uh, go ahead, Trish. So all that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. The sheep didn't hear their voice. So the true sheep in this creation can hear the master's voice. Right. Right. Voice. And when, he hear, when they hear it, they know to follow. That's what's going on. That's what's going on in this creation. And it's a parable, but it's reality. It's a parable, but it's reality that this Messiah is leading his sheep. Yeah. And what we have come to find out is when he does the leading, just like that cloud, he led them up out of there and brought them ultimately into the promise. He can deliver. The one thing we know is our Creator can deliver. That's right. He's going to get you where you need to go. And the, and the thing is, is all, those, all around us, there's thieves and robbers. There's somebody that has, you know, <clears throat> as you say, Peg, somebody says, well, don't ruffle up my little world. Right. Don't you hear that a lot? Yeah. Some, how many times have you heard, well, I think if you're just kind yes. and you're nice right. and you love people, that everything's going to be fine. That's not fine. You know, <laughs> we live in a country here that's they call it a free country. And we're spoiled because of it. But people get the idea that they're free to worship any way they want. That's, that is, that's a thief and a robber. They are robbing you of your eternal life. There's a bug on it. <laughs> um, and, uh, right? <clears throat> so we're talking about a true eternal life that is just, we're just... Um, and I know people are going through things. We're all going through these oddities in the flesh, you know. And uh, um, we, we're just holding on. We're just holding on. We know. We know what's coming. We know there's a permanent temple up here. And this one was just an example of it here. Right? That one... <clears throat> That, this thing was, was, was quite unique in how it was built. There were doors in there, just like there were doors in the t uh, tabernacle, right? But they weren't, they were um, wooden doors. They were made of things like olive wood. And it mentioned in our scripture reading about the fir tree. Yeah. This, the, some of the wood that was in that temple was actually fir. And fir is a better type of pine. Lloydie? Right? Yes. It's, it's more dense, it's a better, and also cedar. It was full of cedar as well. So when you walked into this thing, now I'm talking about, um, we're talking about a temple with a porch, which was the outer part, the sanctuary, which was like going into um, the holy place here, and then what was the other one? Oracle. The oracle, yeah. right? The oracle. It was the, the typified of the most holy place. So you had this grandiose. Um, now all that wood was covered with something. It was covered with gold, right? All I'm talking about on the inside. So you got all this gold going on on the inside, and there were <coughs> there were angels, uh, cherubims they call them, yeah. right in the book, cherubims in there. There was palm trees. If you know anything about palm trees, right? The wind down there in the, in, the, in the Florida will blow them right down, right, to the ground. What happens to them? They pop come right up. back up. They pop right back up, right? They're, they're showing you that there's th these things that are like an eternal uh, eternity down there. And those things are carved into the woodwork. When they're carved into the woodwork, remember how... <clears throat> How the um, high priest here had to wear that miter across his head? Yeah. And it was heavy. It was made of what? Metal. Metal. It was made of gold, gold I think. I think I'm pretty sure it was... It's a plate of gold. Yes. And it had what on it? Holiness, Holiness unto Yahweh. 
holiness unto Yahweh, and it was embossed, or it was impregnated right into his skin. So when he took that thing off, you could see those marks in his forehead, right? That, and these are all parables showing you that there's this, this temple that Yahweh is building and putting together. And um, Peg talked about the, the temple a little bit there. And when that was being put together, what did they hear? They didn't hear a whole lot. And I'm telling you, how many job sites have you been on, Lloydie, or Rick, or any other contractor in here, right? That are so quiet, you don't hear nothing. <laughs> they got radios blaring. They got this going. Somebody's tripping over your cords. Put my cord back, right? So you got all this stuff going on. This one's put together silently. Yeah. So when we walk out here out the door, we go about our daily life. They don't realize you're a stone mm -hmm. or you're a piece of olive wood, right? Or you're part of, and guess what? On these veils up here, right? I'm talking about in the temple. <clears throat> they had chains made of gold that hung down like this. There were gold chains that were part of the separations between um, the oracle and the um, sanctuary, right? So this thing was, there's just, I've been working on this a little bit because I just didn't know that much about it, you know? <clears throat> but there's a, there was a lot of design going on in that. And we're talking about sheep, right? Mm -hmm. So in, in this temple, you'll read that there were these little rooms. And when you, you got to figure out what a cubit is, right? So a cubit is typically, they say, 18 inches. Yes. <clears throat> oh, jeez. Good shot, huh? 18 inches. So when you do this cubit thing, you always take um, <clears throat> whatever it is and do a half of it. So let's say, I'll make it easy to go. Let's say the thing's cubit, uh, 20 cubits, right? So if you take half of that 20, which is 10, right? And so a cubit, when that comes out to feet, it's 30 feet. So you always add half again, because 18 inches is a foot and a half. See what I mean? <laughs> I had to kind of figure it that way. So it's <clears throat> so <clears throat> that's kind of how you look at these cubits. So um, where was I going with that? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it's in. <clears throat> yeah. So we're. Oh yes, yes. So there's these little rooms off the side of right. the. Now there's. Um, artist rendition of it, but I haven't seen a lot of actual renditions of it. You know, there's just not a lot about it. But the, there's these rooms off the side of this, of the sides of the um, temple itself, because it went up pretty high. You know, here it doesn't look that high, um, but the, the porch appears to be raised, raised up, and um, then it goes in, and then it goes up again. And, and the thing is, is if you read over there in um, the Chronicles, where David is shown the pattern, it says he was sitting down and he showed him by his hand upon him, right? I think it's Second Chronicles 29. I don't have, we won't have time to get it. But so he, Yahweh Elohim shows him by his hand upon him that that's how he's going to make the temple, right? And that temple is handed down from father to son, right? <clears throat> Just like that pattern is handed down in a sonship degree, or in Yahweh Elohim, the son, in a sonship degree. So you got all these things repeating. But now listen, in those little rooms are off to the side, they were like, they were like seven and a half feet by nine or something. They're, they're small little rooms. And they, they used them for different things, but um, they could store things in there, whatever. But if you read over there, there's another spot over there where it talks about in my father's mansions, or in my father's house are many mansions, are many mansions or areas or rooms. So, you know, you start to make sense of, of what Yahshua was saying when he's in the flesh, that there's something going on in here. And also, there was... Um, there was uh, obviously a court of the Jews, but there was also a court of what? The Gentiles. the Gentiles. So there was a court of Gentiles and a court of the Jews in this temple, 
right? And you do have an example of it in the tabernacle too, but it wasn't time for that yet. It wasn't time for him to be combined like that. Do you remember what um, the high priest was wearing? Right? He had pomegranates on the on his the bottom of his uh, um, garments. skirt garments, right? And <clears throat> Well, what's the whole point about a, a, a pomegranate is when they dry out, there's just a ton of seeds in them, yeah. right? So all these seeds, of course, you go back to um, Abraham, and it was Abraham's and through his seed, right, that uh, eventually all men would be brought into um, the new covenant or the, uh, or the, te the spiritual temple. Right? All those would be brought in. So there's examples of these <clears throat> principles coming all the way through the line here. So we're talking about parables still, right? Uh, were you finished or you got more? Oh, it goes on for a while, but... Okay. Uh, read a couple more and then we'll, we'll skip out. Okay. Um, nine. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. So going through these doors, there were doors here. Right? There was a Red Sea here they had to come through. There were doors down here in Egypt. That's right. Right? And they had to have, they had to be, it was very specific. Love that 12th chapter, Exodus. I mean, you just, that's just such, just has so much meat in it there. It talks about how the blood has to be placed. So, no, I'm not going to, I don't want to put it on the top. I'm just going to drip in my head every time I go out the door. Right? You can't, right? You can't mess with, with his plan, as Lionel said, when that blood's put on there in all these particulars, that had to be just so, right? right? Your salvation is coming only just so. It has to come through that door. And right. <clears throat> that door had to be placed, right? It had to come in. He had to be the door, mm -hmm. right? He's fulfilling all the doors. There was one door back here. Right. There were doors all the way down through here that were opened and shut. There was a, 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 a um, as, as Adam was driven out there, it's like a veil was there. He's, he's driven out of there. It, it, could he come back in there anytime he wants? No. 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 They put, <laughs> he ain't going back in. There was a door there, right? So you got all these things going on. Uh, okay, we better keep reading here. The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. Now this is the reality. Those thieves, the ones that are telling you, come on into my uh, Joel Olstein, right? How many? He doesn't have. He doesn't have a have a little church. He's got a darn stadium down there, right? Yeah. Now what is he? He's a thief and he's a robber. And boy, I'll tell you, that's the smoothest doctrine. That's the easiest doctrine to put people asleep down there. You listen to Joel for a while. He's just putting them to sleep, telling them what they want to hear. Oh, God's going to, he's going to, um, you know, take care of you here. And he's going to do, it's, he's, he's, uh, he's being led by the wrong spirit there, right? Right. <clears throat> so we're down here. We're blessed that we're being led by the true door and we understand what he has done for us. We understand that he put himself on a cross for us. He did that, right? right? Let's keep reading. Yeah. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Now, Yahshua has come that we could have life and have it more abundantly. Right. Right? Or in more of a reality, a spiritual life. And we're being put together like that temple silently. And when we walk out of here, the people don't know. They don't know what's going on with us. Right. Our problems aren't what their problems are, really. Where our problems are, geez, sometimes I feel like I don't have the Holy Spirit. <laughs> That's what our problems are. Do you think all these other people go around thinking that? <laughs> Right? We're introspective here. We want to make sure that we're sincere to our Creator, and it's all going on within us. This is just, it's just something else that He's put before us here. Right. Right? Um, go ahead, Trish. 11. I am the Good Shepherd. 
The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. So that's pretty simple. The good shepherd, you know, you can run the shepherd all, you know, John does a, a really cool job with the shepherd down through here, going back to David, yeah. right? And, and he's the good, these, this, we're talking about the good shepherd. And all those shepherds, all the good through the book, it's pointing towards Joshua. Right. It's all pointing to our shepherd that's coming in in the likeness of sinful flesh for us, right? right? Hmm. Uh, go ahead, please. But he that is a hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and, and leaves flees. The and the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. And he scatters the sheep. Yep. And we've experienced that in this institute. Sure. We have seen it. And I, I, I can't remember who said it, but was talking about, um, y y you know, when people split or there's a division yes. and boy did we have that and um and what that what that does to you you know um i mean these were friends of ours all of ours that um we sat there listening to the same thing that they listened to right and it it and it it penetrated us mm -hmm. just like that sun peg was talking about the sun rays coming down you know and we're coming up to that eclipse too and you can't just go out and look at that you got to have what? Special. You got to have some glasses or a welder's mask or something on it. Because you can't look directly at that thing, at that sun. He'll put a burning on you, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but anyways, uh, let's go. Uh, one a more. A hireling more. flees mm -hmm. because he is a hireling. He's a hireling. Now, and when he Moses. He not for the sheep. Right. <laughs> Doesn't care for the sheep. When Moses was up here, he was up here. What was his job? Well, he, it says, he tended the sheep. Didn't he tend the sheep up here? It says Jethro's flock <coughs> in, under that righteous mystery. So he's up there, and he was a good shepherd, mm -hmm. and he did it for quite some time before he went down there. So he, in a way, he's prepped. He's being prepped by his occupation to go down there and bring out a little yard, larger herd. Right? He goes down there after... Uh, <clears throat> Yahweh Elohim tells him, or Yahshua tells him to go down in there and bring out these folks. Yes. So he was pre-prepped. Uh, I want to, that's good. Okay. <clears throat> Trish, let's, do you still have that? Um, Matthew 13? Yeah. Okay. Matthew 13 and 1. The same day went Yahshua out of the house and sat by the seaside, mm -hmm. and great multitudes were gathered together unto him, mm -hmm. so that he went into a boat and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore, and he spoke many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. So, aren't, see, we're talking about over here in Isaiah, our scripture reading, mm -hmm. and we're talking about it being a parable. Right. And that's that's what this world is. That's what these bodies are. Everything is a parable or this, this, there's underlining meaning to everything that we see and to the, our own physical bodies. Now that's some kind of creator. He creates the, a, a perfect example of himself as he showed Moses up there, uh, uh, shape and form. And then everything that we carry around with us from a day-to-day -day basis points to him. So how can he send somebody to the lake of fire, right? When you're walking around with the very thing, oh, every time you, his, as, you're, as you're breathing, <gasps> he's not Jesus. Or it, it's not Yahweh, it's Jesus. Um, somebody just, just <laughs> Tracy was just telling somebody at work the other day um, and got talking about it. And said, uh, no, they said, well, what are you? Because she didn't believe in Lent, and she doesn't do Lent, and they had the crosses on and everything. And she said, well, I'm a Yashuan, hmm. right? And uh, so what did you say to him? I just explained the names. I explained the names. He explains the names, and then Bill said what? This is the guy that works with her. He, go, he said, goodbye, Yahweh. He, <laughs> he said, he said, Yashua. He goes, he, must work he goes, there. He goes, are you a witch? She yeah, goes, no, I'm not a witch. I'm a, I'm a Yashuan. And so when he left, he said, okay, we'll see you, yeah, witch. I go, you know, you got to be careful with that oh, stuff. Yeah. Right, Deb? Mem right. People yeah. at work start talking about like that. That's right. right. He called her a yeah, witch. I said, you warn that guy, you know, don't mess around like that. <clears throat> um, so anyways, we're talking about this parable um, over in Isaiah. 
it's repeating this whole creation, and hopefully we get to it here, um, where it talks about how everything that comes out of Yahshua's mouth while he's walking around is a parable. It's a comparison. It's an allegory, right? Please read that. And when he sowed, some of the seeds fell by the wayside. So this is the parable, right? Mm -hmm. yep. He's got this sower that goes forth to sow seed, right? Yep. And when you open your book, you open your book in the Genesis, and it says Yahweh Elohim walked on what? Walk. Walked on the water. What was he doing out there? <laughs> Cast, right? <laughs> Cast and seed. Go ahead, Doug. And the fowls came and devoured them. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprang up because they had no deepness of earth, and when the sun was up, they were scorched. They were scorched, or they were withered by the sun, right? He's, he's drawn these comparisons out that are very simple. You should be able to understand this, yes. right? Go ahead. Because they had no root, they withered away. There was no root. That's what's important. That's what happened to our classes. There were those with roots, and the root goes down, and that gets all the goodies out of the ground. And you know how our, our, our dietary system is, is kind of messed up now? Our, our, our soil is depleted of the nutrients that it once had. So they have to keep putting back into the soil. And it's not always, um, you know, GMOs or, you know, uh, I mean, artificial artificial fertilizers and stuff instead of the natural like taking your old cow dung out and spreading it on the field now it's all liquefied and it runs off the whole system's a mess it's not it's not the way it was in, it started out the, even if you are eating good salads and greens you still might not be getting the nutrients out of it you know what i mean that's what i'm trying to say is that physical is revealing the spiritual <clears throat> that this this food out there in the <clears throat> religious world is not sustaining Okay. Right. Um, go ahead. Some Please. fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them. The thorns. See, there were those that came into this class, and they were hot for the gospel, right? And then all of a sudden, somebody starts, hey, no, 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 that's not, no, you're wrong with that. You should try this. This is, there, there really isn't a soul. There's not a soul. There's only one soul, Yahshua Messiah. You ever heard that? Mm. Right? <laughs> Everything starts getting tainted. Yeah. Go ahead. Step, please. Other seeds fell into good ground and brought forth fruit. Now you got some seeds that go into that ground and they're down in that soil. The sun is penetrating down and they got some fruit going on. Go ahead. Some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. And Whoever can understand this parable, get something out of this. Right? Go ahead. The disciples came unto him. Why speakest thou unto them in parables? Why are you got, why, Yahshua, are you, it's him talking to them here, right? He's saying, why are you always running around talking about parables? That's the point. Go ahead, though. He answered and said unto them, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries. It's giving, excuse me, given unto you. It's giving unto you. He's giving. It's a gift. You can't earn it. You can't go into Joel Olstein's and feel good coming out of there all week long and think that you're going to be put into the kingdom of heaven. It's not happening. No. Right? No. There has to be some root. He wants, he wants his sheep rooted, or his seed rooted in the ground. Yeah. We are rooted in Yahshua Messiah. That is our tap root. Right? Yeah. Go ahead. It's given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. It's just not given unto them. Our class was, what, 70, almost, almost 80 people at one time. Yeah. Our class, this class in Syracuse, New York, was that many people. Yes. Right? So <clears throat> it was it, the same gospel was spread or was verbalized or was preached, right? And could you repeat that, Dom? Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. Guess what? It's just given to us to know these great mysteries. It's just given to us. Can you believe it? Right. And unto them it was what, Deb? Not given. It was just not given to them. And it's sad. It's sad. But you know what? We have to keep the root in the ground, and we're pulling up nutrients from the Law and the Prophets. We're pulling these nutrients out, and people get up here, and it builds our 
It builds our soul. That's what this gospel does. It builds our inner man and carries us through. We know if Yahshua can bring a million people up out of here <clears throat> and sift them out in the wilderness, it was a high death rate. There was only a few that went in here. But we know we're standing here at that River Jordan or at this vale we're at this veil. We're standing there, and we're looking dead on into it, because he's brought us this far, and he's not gonna, he's not gonna let us go at this point, right? He's given us that which we need to be. Because look, there was only a few of them that made it over, and guess what they had to deal with for forty years? Isn't this where we are? We're in that um, <clears throat> holy place. Over in Matthew 24, it says, stand in the holy place. Keep standing until you get in here, then you can rest. We know we got rest. We see a pattern here. This pattern represents, oh, it's a parable, all right, but it represents rest. And we can hardly wait. He's given us all this understanding down here at the end of the age. And we embrace it, we hold on to it, and we want anybody that's watching this, you hold on to everything you learn. And why did, what did Dr. Kinley say about that? You're gonna, you're gonna need it. You're gonna need it. So you just come down here. And look, you know, I heard Dr. Kinley on a tape the other day, and he, and he quoted this thing, and I, uh, it talks about um, much learning, and it's over in Psalms somewhere. Um, Proverbs or Ecclesiastes. And it says, much learning makes a weariness of the soul. Or not much learning, much? Is it much learning? So, much study. I think it might be much study. But anyways, you know, you just can't um, sit down and compact all this information into yourself. Because <laughs> if, if, if you have so many talents he's given you, then you're only getting so much. But what we do know is we know that Yahshua's salvation and he is the door that's allowing us to go through it. And he's the good shepherd leading us to those paths of righteousness in his namesake. Right. And hallelujah. You know, I, I know I didn't get too far. I hope somebody got something. Thanks for the time. <clears throat> Thank you, Dr. Welch. That concludes this evening's lecture. Bell Peace Lives for the Doxology. Now unto Yahshua, who alone is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise Yahshua, our Savior, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and for all times, we'll all say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah.